Hey there Seahawks, it's Miss Adams, and in this video, we're going to learn about the multiplication rule for independence. Alright, so the multiplication rule for independent events says that if A and B are independent events, the probability that A and B both occur is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So if they're independent events, probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Mutually exclusive and independence relationship. Two mutually exclusive events with non-zero probabilities can never be independent because if one event happens, the other event is guaranteed not to happen. All right, multiplication rule for independent events. Harris Interactive recently reported that 29% of all U.S. adults favored abolishing the penny. Suppose this percentage is true. Assuming responses from different individuals are independent, what is the probability of having three randomly selected U.S. adults all say that they favor abolishing the penny? So this means that I want to find the probability that the first person says abolish the penny and the second person says abolish the penny and the third person says abolish the penny. So A and B and C essentially in this case, or A and A and A because it's the same thing. Well, the probability of them um, wanting favoring abolishing the penny is 29% across the U.S. So we're going to use that um, probability three times, so 0 0.29 to the third, which works out to be 0 0.0244. All right, uh, finding at least one probabilities. So Harris Interactive recently reported that 33% of U.S. adults believe that finding and picking up a penny is good luck. Suppose this percentage is true. Assuming responses from different individuals are independent, what is the probability of selecting 10 U.S. adults and finding at least one who believes that finding and picking up a penny is good luck? So anytime you see at least one, I want you to think of one minus the probability of none. So I'm going to find the probability that no one believes pennies are good luck. Um, and then the probability that all 10 people don't believe that the pennies are good luck. So that would be finding the probability that none of the 10 people believe pennies are good luck. And then I'll subtract that from one to figure out the probability of at least one of them thinking it is. So uh, the probability that they do not believe it's good luck would be 0.67, which is 1 minus 0.33 um, to the 10th, or times it by itself 10 times, which gives us 0 0.0182. And then the probability at least one person believes that pennies are good luck would be 1 minus the probability that all 10 of them do not believe it. Right, which gives us a 98.18%. So at least one means it could be just one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be all 10. So there's a lot of different possibilities there. All right, beware lack of independence. So according to the current population survey, 27% of US females are older than 55. The Center for Disease Control and prevention, the CDC, reported that 6% of all U.S. females are pregnant. Suppose that these results are accurate. If we randomly select a U.S. female, is the probability of pregnant and over 55% equal to 0 0.06 times 0.27? So can I just say that the probability that they're pregnant and over 55% equals 0 0.0162 because I multiply those two probabilities? Why or why not? So uh, we cannot say that because being older than 55 and being pregnant are not independent events. Okay, those events are not independent. Knowing that the chosen female is older than 55 makes it much less likely that she is pregnant. Okay, so if they're not independent events, you can't just simply multiply their probabilities. All right, go see Hawks.